Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Gavin Lockyer from Arafura. How are you today? Good thanks, Tracy. Always, Always good to be back. So, Gavin, let's start with the market in general. It seems like there seems to be a rekindling or revitalization of interest in the looming rare earth shortage. What do you think? What's happening right now? I think, I think there's a number of things going on. Um, we're seeing the, the effects of the Chinese consolidation of the industry um, really starting to impact on supply, and that's, um, that's had a flow-through um, uh, impact on the NDPR price in particular, which has been um, uh, well received by the markets. Uh, but we're also starting to see that the Chinese are actually using more and more of their own domestic um, production for Chinese magnet manufacturing. And, uh, and this is going to start putting some real pressure on the, on the rest of the world um, in, the, in the next few years. So, uh, you know, we're starting to see ourselves, uh, you know, a bit of a renewed interest in, in the whole technology metal space. And, of course, NDPR, for anyone out there in investor intel land that does not know what that is, is, of course, neodymium and presidymium. Did I pronounce that properly? I should after yep. all these years. Yes? That's perfect. And these are, of course, magnetic materials. And in the last month, Gavin, we've noticed you've had an onslaught of basically news releases. One news release after another. Every other day it's air of fear. And, of course, your stock price is really getting the support from the shareholders. Can you talk to us about your, your recent private placement announcements and what you're planning on utilizing the funds for? Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, I, I guess as a um, as an extension of that um, technology metal sort of uh, revitalization that we've seen uh, over the last 12 months you've seen it really impact on the lithium graphite cobalt guys but that's that's all battery technology and those batteries inevitably have to drive a, a motor and if you want that motor to be um, to be efficient it must use rare earth magnets and so we're now seeing the financial investment community starting to recognise this and they're starting to look for the next opportunity in technology metals and and you know we've been fortunate to get on the on the on the receiving end of that and uh, and and put some uh, some private placement away uh, which is you know our first capital raising since 2012 so it's really pleasing to see and um, you know we're going to be putting that towards our um, feasibility studies which uh, we aim for completion end of this end of next year and of course, you've got a pilot plant program proceeding, and you've had some announcements about that. In fact, I, I read you had the successful con conclusion of first stage of phase four piloting. Can you dumb that down for me and tell me exactly what that sure. means for us? Yeah, absolutely. Look, um, you know, historically, um, rare earth projects haven't um, haven't had a, a bit of a, a good wrap around commissioning, etc., outside of China. And so, what we're doing here is about de-risking the commissioning phase of, of the project. It's not about proving the flow sheet or the chemistry. So, uh, we decided to take the um, take the route of undertaking a pilot program where we're taking 16 tons of our material from Nolan's bore, and we're putting it through various um, seven stages of, of piloting. And what this means is that we're, we're basically proving up and, and getting uh, engineering data and we're getting operational data on how our material flows through the various stages of the process. And uh, acid bake, which is stage four, as you alluded to, um, that's a critical part of many rare earth processes. And um, in, in particular, over the last uh, six months, as we've discussed our, our piloting programs with potential financiers, they've indicated that many of them have visited other plants um, around the world and they see this as, a, as a, a critical point in the flow sheet design. And so whilst our flow sheet's very different to, to other, other projects, we're not operating our acid or our kilns at 800 degrees Celsius. Ours is only around 300, which is still quite warm. But it enables us to use alternate equipment, which might not be so problematic when we go for commissioning. So we've decided to take a little bit of extra time uh, to do that, and uh, that's what we're up to at the moment. The first phase of that was announced and completed successfully, and we're now looking to do it at a slightly larger scale. And, of course, Arafura has been one of the, the top half a dozen rare earth plays that I've been following since 2009. I've been out to your property. Can you tell us what other exciting, you know, we should be expecting in, say, the next quarter or two? 
Sure. Well, look, the, the next, next um, the next twelve months are looming as as a pivotal part for uh, for our Fura and uh, history making for the uh, for the NDPR space. We um, are in the process now of um, getting our final environmental approval. We would expect that before the end of this year, so in, in the current quarter. Uh, and there's been no major risks or uh, issues identified there. So that's um, that's a credit to our, our team and our consultants that uh, got us through that project. The, um, the other, I guess, um, things which aren't too sexy in the market are obviously our, our piloting, which um, we, we are targeting completion by the middle of next year. But uh, our recent capital raisings have given us confidence now to fast track some of our engineering studies. So we'll be looking to appoint a lead engineer uh, to complete that um, engineering design, which will ultimately uh, accumulate in a bankable study. Um, but more importantly, I guess on top of that, to underpin the whole project finance, we, we really need a strong off-taker and we'll be uh, ramping up our, our engagement and our discussions with uh, potential customers in the coming six months too. And of course, all of us at Investor Intel are very bullish on rare earths. We understand the issues relating to not only this global supply shortage, but you know, I, I see a lot more demand with the magnetic uh, metals moving forward. Do you want to just comment on what you expect to happen in, say, 2018? Yeah, um, you know, most forecasts and analysts are, are forecasting growth in the magnet material of around 8% per and, um Look, even if every project that's currently being developed gets developed, that's still not enough to um, to meet that growing demand. And you know, <clears throat> we're seeing daily um, news flow out of uh, from around the globe where governments are forcing um, forcing uh, combustible engines outside of their major cities. Um, China and its twenty twenty five um, China growth policy is. is claiming it's going to have 30% of um, all its motor vehicle fleets EV by 2025. And uh, if you multiply, you know, 41 million uh, electric vehicles by about 1.7 kilograms of NDPR, then that's a lot of NDPR. Well, Gavin, thank you so much for the update. It's a pleasure as always. Thanks very much, Tracy, and always good to talk to you.